estés picando, yo miro el techo y se va a caer. ¿Por qué te pone triste hablar de esto, Yuri? Porque se puede caer el techo, nos podemos morir. La muerte, esa maldita... Death appears without warning, violently taking the son, the mother, the teacher, the student. It appears and makes them disappear. But there are times in which death allies with the untamed beast called nature. And then not only is it untimely, but an inconsiderate burst. Wild, rampaging, and devastating. It can be a shocking 7.9 magnitude jolt in the night. It may be the wind passing through the skin and taking the last breath of a child. Or it can come in the form of rain, drowning out hope. Juan is 12 and in the sixth grade. He lives in Belén, Loreto. His favorite course is mathematics. We don't know the answer for many reasons. The problems of education in Peru are innumerable, but are repeated every year with perfect mathematical timing. Como ustedes ven acá, todo esto este, nos ha dejado la madera ya deteriorada. Trato de solucionar este problema poniendo estas maderitas para que los niños no se caigan. En realidad, el colegio ya no está en condiciones de que un niño venga a jugar, a corretear, porque como ves acá, cómo se mueve, ¿no? Con la creciente acá, nos ha dejado ya sin el, sin el bañito ya. Todo esto, esta madera que está podrida acá, lo he puesto ahí para que los niños vean. ¡Wow! Miren. Carmen feels the same frustration. A primary school teacher in Isla de Quitos, a small village 20 minutes from a city of the same name. The last flood in Loreto appeared in the headlines in this way. More than 229 victims, over 72,000 homes damaged, 724 schools and colleges affected. Statistics from journalism, but behind them, there are millions of stories like ones that cannot be quantified. How to measure a future twisted with misfortune? How can we tell one that perhaps he cannot be an engineer because a river stole his hours in the classroom? A three-hour drive from Juliaca is the town of Magusani, one of the most affected by the cold spells that each year strike this area of the country. This year, 62 schools were affected by heavy hail and winds. One of them, a flagship school, more than 100 years old. También con la intensa nevada que ha que ha caído aquí a Magusani, tenemos también como prueba aquí lo que se ha caído todo el muro de aquí de, del teatrín. Ahora esto de, del muro es producto de la lluvia. El año pasado se ha caído y finalmente ahora este año también ha terminado de caerse, colapsar el muro como estamos viendo. Y los alumnos corren el riesgo de ser, de repente, de puede suscitarse cualquier accidente, ¿no? Cuando la persona está explicando, yo miro el techo y se va a caer. ¿Por qué te pone triste hablar de esto, Yuri? Porque se puede caer el techo, nos podemos morir. Little Judith is just five years old and every day lives thinking about death. She studies alongside 20 other children under one roof which is at the point of collapse. 
and the only thing she knows is that there is no other place for her or her friends. She does not know what to do. There is no plan, unfortunately facing possible misfortune against a new hailstorm. This year's cold spell has been described by journalists in this way. One dead, 5,247 homeless, 739 rustic homes uninhabitable, 26,641 dead animals, 316 kilometers of roads affected. This year, they lost two weeks of classes. According to their mothers, lack of classes meant days of depression and despair, a direct emotional impact. On August 15, 2007, an earthquake with a magnitude of 7.9 took place, a savage, wild jolt. 593 Peruvians died. More than 100,000 houses were destroyed. Death came to settle in town squares, churches, and schools. But there in the midst of hopelessness, a child came into the world to give faith for tomorrow. To speak of rebirth, Ivan was the first child born after the earthquake. A survivor who is now six years old and goes to one of the many schools rebuilt after the earthquake of 2007. For the people of Pisco, the experience has taught them by taking some of their lives. Now, they do regular drills and receive training from time to time. A disaster causes the entire educational community, teachers, students and parents, an emotional impact. Infrastructure damage, loss of property, damage to educational material, losses of class hours, and finally, the desertion of many students. Now, thanks to the Safe Schools program, it is in your hands to change history. For the first time, the Ministry of Education has scheduled a special item for disaster prevention in schools. Everything we've seen today is no longer a stranger. Now we have to ask, how much to invest in preparing principals, teachers and students? What is the plan for the next wind chill that will no longer steal Noelia's class hours? What are you going to do about the next rainstorm that will not force one to stop his life? Maybe you cannot prevent an earthquake leaving us without a school, but can we avoid not having school without any school hours? Are you ready? Have you prepared the others? Now it's up to you to do your homework, and now I do it. It does not have to do with a bad grade. It is about choosing life over death. Even though we do not see it, sooner or later it will happen. Prevention is the difference.